Hi, I'm Jaya, and I'll be taking over for Sydney in the How to Research series. This lesson will be on news biases. So what are news biases? First, let's establish the difference between news and opinion. News include everything that's fact-based. So let's take the example of the fact that Jaya ate ice cream. Opinion is everything that's outside analysis. So an example of this would be my brother telling my parents Jaya ate ice cream because she was hungry. If I did not explicitly say I ate ice cream because I was hungry, then that's my brother's analysis or opinion of my action. In reality, I might have eaten ice cream because it was hot outside and I wanted something cold. So that's a silly example, but let's look at something that newspapers might do when they use opinion to interpret facts. Let's take an example of a fact of Saudi Arabia increasing its oil prices. Well, opinion would include a reporter saying Saudi Arabia probably increased its prices because it needs more money. That's their opinion or analysis of why Saudi Arabia took a certain action. In reality, Saudi Arabia might have done it for geostrategic reasons or political reasons. That's why we have to distinguish between what we're going to call opinion and news. So, what are biases? Well, biases are anything that affect your interpretation of facts or really just anything that affect your opinion. In debate, there are three main types of biases that we want to be aware of. The first one is political bias. This is when somebody's political beliefs affect the way they interpret facts. So if someone leans more liberal or leans more conservative or is a Democrat or is a Republican and they let that affect how they interpret facts, then their articles might be affected by political bias. It's not always necessarily a bad thing, but it is something to be aware of. The second type of bias is selling bias. This is where newspapers write their articles in such a way as to get readers to read them as opposed to portray the most accurate or realistic information. Oftentimes, this manifests itself in the form of clickbait headlines where they just write headlines for the sake of getting you to click, but the headlines aren't exactly accurate. Again, something to be aware of. The third example is viewpoint bias. I call this viewpoint bias because it relates to the way your social location affects how you view facts. By social location, I mean how your race, ethnicity, sex, gender, socioeconomic status, etc. affect how you interpret facts. Oftentimes, this manifests itself in the form of stereotypes. Stereotypes in the newspapers are pretty subtle, but you want to be aware of when reporters are grouping an entire category of people together and homogenizing them. So how can you detect biases? Well, one thing you should do is look at the language. Is there particularly strong rhetoric? If there is, and they seem really passionate about the matter, it's likely that the person has a strong stance on it due to political bias or other types of bias. Again, it's not entirely a bad thing, but it is an indicator that some bias is probably at play. The second thing you can do is look at the headlines. Does it look like clickbait? Does it look like something that's supposed to catch your attention that's flashy as opposed to something that's entirely accurate and meant to portray information in the most responsible way? If so, and it looks like clickbait probably has selling bias involved. The third thing you should do is look at their sources. Are all their claims backed up by evidence? Are there hyperlinks for every claim they make? Are there sources or citations for different claims they make? If not, the article probably is not very good. You should have evidence to back up your claims. The fourth and final way that I'll mention is actually look at their claims. Do they rely on any stereotypes? Is there homogenization of any groups? If so, viewpoint bias is probably at play. Now, let's take a look at a live tool to detect bias. In addition to all of those different questions I just gave you to figure out whether a source is biased, there's also this really helpful tool I used in high school called MediaBiasChart.com. This will show you whether a source is biased. As we'll talk about in a second, it's not a definitive authority, but it's often really helpful. Either you can type this link into your browser, 
Or you can look up mediabiaschart.com, which will redirect you to adfontismedia.com, and then you should scroll down to get to the interactive media chart. So pause the video, and I'm going to walk you through in a second, once you have it open, what the different parts of the media bias chart mean. By now, you should have the media bias chart open, and it should look like this. We're going to walk through some of the different features on this chart. The first thing you should notice is on the bottom part of the page, there's a left and right for political bias spectrum. This will indicate whether a source leans to the left, meaning that it leans more liberal or democratic, or leans to the right, meaning it leans more conservative or Republican. On the left-hand side of the chart, you can see that there's an overall source reliability metric. It goes from 0 to 64, with 64 being the most reliable and 0 being the least reliable. It has different ways to describe sources for each of the different ranks in metric. The last thing that we should notice are the different boxes that are around sources. There's a type key for what the different boxes indicate. The green box indicates that it's the most reliable for news. The yellow box indicates that it's reliable for news, but high in analysis and opinion context. The orange box has some reliability and or extremism issues. And then finally, the red box, which is just the very bottom one, says that it has serious reliability issues and or extremism. So right now we're displaying all sources, but let's say that we only wanted to look at the reliability of the Huffington Post. Well, we can look at it right here on the chart and we'll zoom in to take a look at specifically where it lands, which is within the yellow box and somewhere around the 40 mark. And it says right here that it's 38.68 reliability and it also skews left with a negative 13.18 score. So that kind of gives you an idea of what this can be used for. You can look up any news source that you're feeling kind of iffy about and you're able to evaluate how reliable it is. So now let's go back to looking at displaying all sources. What this is gonna tell us is a couple other things as well. We can filter our source accuracy range. Let's say that we only want sources that are above a 48 in accuracy. We can filter our range and then only take a pick at the sources that are within this region. Additionally, let's say we only want sources that lean left. Well, we can then filter it for everything to be below zero on the source political bias range. Additionally, you can do that for any sources that lean right if you only want sources that lean right. So, I want you to play around with this tool a little bit, and we're going to have a couple more assignments. So I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoint, and we'll take a look at where your assignments are. Before you go, I want you to take special note of two things. First, which source is the least biased? So which source has the highest ranking on credibility? The second one is which source is the most biased or has the lowest ranking on credibility? You should write this down somewhere since there will be quiz questions after the video. Now I want you to pause the video, take note of those two things, and just play around with the mediabiaschart.com a little bit. Welcome back. So now we're going to discuss, is this site always reliable? Well, detecting bias is also a subjective matter just as interpretation of news is. So the way that they view one source may differ slightly from the way that you view another source. As such, the mediabiaschart.com is a handy tool, but it isn't the definitive source of what is or is not biased. Even still, even if an organization is biased, there's a possibility that one of their articles may not be biased, and vice versa. If an organization is not biased, maybe one of their articles is biased. It's all really a matter of interpretation, and you should stick to your best judgment. This is just to help you along a little bit. So now what we're going to do is take a live look at evaluating news sources with a resolution. We're going to continue with this resolution, which you've seen before. Resolved, the United States federal government should substantially reduce its restrictions on legal immigration to the United States. I want you to look up something related to the resolution. Then... I want you to click on news under the Google search bar, and then I want you to open the first three articles that appear on Google. 
don't do this yet because I have more instructions. But either remember these instructions that you just have to find three articles or write this down somewhere. The exercise is going to be that I want you to rank how biased you think the articles are. Here are a couple of guiding questions. First, what kind of rhetoric does it use? Second, what does the headline look like? Third, do all claims have evidence or hyperlinks? Fourth, is there evidence of stereotyping? After you rank these news articles on your own, I want you to check with Media Bias Chart and see how they rank your news source in comparison to how biased you saw it. Again, this is not a definitive arbiter of who is and isn't biased. Rather, it's just a handy tool. So if Media Bias Chart disagrees with you, that's totally fine. Now, I want you to pause the video, take some time to do this, and come back when you're done. Welcome back again. So here are my results. I found two articles that I'm going to show you and we're going to walk through them. Here are the URLs in case you're the kind of person who wants to type the actual URL into your browser, but I'm also going to show you what the titles of the articles are so that you're able to find them on your own just by searching them into Google. What I want you to do is I want you to evaluate these articles on your own and then you're going to come back and discuss with me on how biased these articles actually are. But before you go, like I promised, I'm going to show you what their titles are. The first article is by The Hill. It's called Leaking Legal Experts Urge Aggressive Immigration Actions. It's by David J. Beer. So take a moment to type this in. The second article is on Before It's News, and the title is So Biden Wants to Change Immigration Rules in the Middle of a Pandemic. Take a moment to type this in as well. Now pause the video evaluate how reliable you think these news articles are, and then we'll discuss it together. So we're going to start with the Hill article. Taking a look at the first couple of paragraphs, we can see that it talks about how Joe Biden is going to assume office. There's a compilation of essays that was published by the Cato Institute. We can see a couple of hyperlinks, which is a good sign. Then we go to the next paragraph that's talking about what the compilation was arguing, and then there's one that describes the authors who were writing for this compilation. It seems pretty unbiased, it's just talking about the facts of the compilation and politics at the current moment. Now we can see that the author is the compilation's editor. The author clearly feels that Biden will reverse the damage of the last four years. This indicates that this author is probably pretty liberal beliefs with regards to immigration policy at the very least. So, we can now kind of see some type of bias coming into play. Now we go back to this next one, and we're starting to see it go back to the kind of factual-based matter that we were talking about. The lead essay was written by this person, and here's what it discusses. Clearly, this author agrees with what's written inside of the lead essay, but... The author is sticking to facts of the matter from what they found within their compilation. So, there is a little bit of bias, but it's backed up by evidence, which is a really good sign and means that you're cutting a strong piece of evidence. It continues on to discuss another part of the compilation written by another author. Again, the compilation's author agrees with this and thinks that it's a really great article and is probably slightly biased because they disagree with Trump's policies and think that we should be more liberal with regards to immigration policy. But overall, we have a really qualified author, we have evidence that's backing up the article, and so this looks like a pretty, pretty solid article to use. Importantly, however, I would go to the compilation itself and find evidence from within the compilation instead of taking it off this news site, because that way I would have more evidence and more statistics to back up my claims instead of just using a top-level summary. So now we're going to skip over to the Before It's News article. In this article, we see a really long summary of something that was taken from CBS. So this probably isn't relevant to our point because it looks like the author is going to refute this. And as we see, the author has a really short refutation of the CBS article. However, we can note a couple of different things. It's not really much of an analysis. It's more of the author's discombobulated thoughts without much evidence to back it up. 
there are no hyperlinks or citations, which is generally a really bad sign for an article. This is probably not something that's reliable at all. So, now that we've done our evaluation and kind of read through the article, we're going to look at what does the media bias chart say. So, we're going to type in the hill. The hill looks pretty reliable. It has a neutral bias, which is fair and is not talking about our specific article, which tends to lean more liberal. Clearly, it has some opinion content, but for the most part, it falls within the green box. It's on the line of the yellow box. I would say it's pretty good. Let's look up before it's news. This falls within the serious reliability issues and or extremism box and leans heavily far right. It's also so inaccurate that it probably contains fabricated information. So we can see here that our interpretation of these news sources was pretty accurate. We thought before its news was not very reliable, it refuted it in a very right-leaning way. The Hill was pretty neutral, it had some opinion in it, but we thought it did a very good job at sticking to the facts of the compilation and what the compilation found. So, hopefully your analysis was somewhere near mine and you kind of landed on something near what the media bias chart was talking about. And if not, then try and get more practice with this. And hopefully the media bias chart can help teach you which sources are and are not reliable and guide you on your path to becoming a news expert. So now we're going to go back to the PowerPoint and do a couple more activities and then conclude this lesson. Let's take another live look at bias sources. I want you to do two things. I want you to go to the website of one source that falls within the red square in the media bias chart and one source that falls within the green square of the media bias chart. I want you to look up on both websites something related to the resolution and read one article from each website. That would be two articles in total. I want you to take note of differences between the two articles. So what is their rhetoric like? What are their headlines like? What's their evidence like? And what are the stereotypes? Now pause the video and go engage in the exercise. Welcome back. We're gonna take a look at my results and see how you all were able to evaluate the articles in comparison to mine. We're gonna stick with the same before it's news article since that happens to fall in the red square as we discussed, but we're also gonna look at an article from the AP. So you can pause this video and type in the URL or I'm going to give you the titles right now. The title of the AP article is Biden colon reversing Trump border policies will take months by Alexandra Jaffe. And in case you exited out of it, the title of the before it's news article is so Biden wants to change immigration rules in the middle of a pandemic. So. Pause the video here, and I want you all to evaluate how do these two sources differ. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at the AP article first. When we read through the AP article, we can see that it's talking about where were these comments made and who made them, what were they made about. And then we can see that a lot of its quotations really talking about what Biden has said with regards to immigration policy. It also sets the stage for why Biden is talking about this and what is the situation of immigration currently like using statistics in the United States. Then it goes into more quotations. And we won't bother looking at the rest of the article because it really just keeps going with all of the different types of quotations. This is important to note because it sticks to the facts, it doesn't really have a ton of interpretation, and that's what the AP is known for. On the other hand, before its news is really only interpretation. It's random musings of a person who was able to write on this website that doesn't have much evidence to back it up, but is really only based in their opinion. So. That kind of concludes all of the exercises that we did inside of this lecture series. So why is this relevant? The reason why this is relevant is because of credibility. The first thing is you want to make sure you maintain your own credibility in the debate space as someone who reads good evidence and has good research practices. You aren't taking false information. 
You're making sure you evaluate your sources with a careful eye on how good the sources are. The second reason is for evidence comparison. You want to be able to say that your sources are more credible and more qualified than your opponent's source, so the judge should vote for you. But is this always relevant? No, the goal is just to find reliable sources. Just because a source is left-leaning or right-leaning doesn't automatically make it an unreliable source. You want to make sure that it has good information, opinion is often necessary while you're finding evidence for debate rounds, but you want to make sure that the opinion is has some evidence to back it up. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this was helpful.